Say the name of Jesus, of Jesus. 
made it. I've been kind of under the weather for about three days, and today I was able to go work on that little old house that's about to kill me. I was in the floor for hours working, putting down flooring. I told my sister as we were leaving, I said, I am not going to make it to church tonight. You put a 71-year-old woman down in the floor, you about have to get a wreck or to get her up <laughs> after several hours of working. I told her, I said, I, I'm not going to be able to make it to church. And so I stopped by the car lot to tell Ronnie I was leaving. And Marty, my telephone rang. And it was the Bryson City Church of God. <laughs> encouraging everybody to come to church tonight. I told my sister, I said, well, there goes my excuse. <laughs> that shower and that nap in that big chair for about 15 minutes helped. But that encouraging word did more than either of those. You know, we never know when somebody just needs right. an encouraging word. Amen. You never know that person sitting beside you just might be on the very edge. Right. And they just need you to say, I love you. How are you today? Just smile at them. Let them know you care about them. I love you tonight, and I'm glad I didn't miss. Worship with them tonight, let's I'm going to try this. Who knows you can go to the rock when you need some?
praise the Lord. Thank you, God. It's what David said. He said, I go to the rock that's higher than I. Yes, Lord. And how many knows you can go find Jesus Christ? Thank God He'll be your help. He'll be your strength. He'll help you in every time of need of your life. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, kids, you can go back at this time. I know you're antsy. Ready to go? Amen. All right, church, I'm going to need your help tonight because I didn't write one scripture down. Uh, so I'm going to have to have you to look them up. Praise the Lord. I wrote them down, but I didn't write them down if you know what I'm talking about. Uh, you get uh, too dependent uh, <laughs> on other sources. And, and uh, so uh, tonight, i tell you what I want us to do. I'm going to get everybody involved uh, as much as I can this evening. Uh, Brother Joseph, will you look up Matthew uh, chapter 12 and verse 36. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 36. Uh, Sister Bobby Jo, will you look up James 1 and 26. James 1 and 26. Uh, Brother Sean, will you look up uh, Proverbs chapter 10. Oh, you don't have any specs on. Uh, Brother Beans, you got your specs on? Alright, Proverbs. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 19. And uh, let me see here. Uh, uh, I'm looking I can get one, brother. I've got a pair now. You got a pair now? <laughs> get, all right. You look up Matthew uh, chapter 15, verses 17 through verses 20. And uh, I tell you what, I'm going to pick on who else am I going to pick on? Brother Scotty, uh, will you look up Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 9? And then let me see here, Sister Vicki, will you look up Genesis chapter 8 and verse 21? Uh, let me think. Who, who don't care to read it? Just, uh, all right, Brother Matthew, look up Romans 12 and 2. Uh, Sister Marcia, look up Psalms 119 and verse 11. Uh, Brother Adam, you care to read? Yes, sir. Uh, I want you to read uh, Psalm 1. Those, I think there's four or five verses there here in just a few minutes. Psalm 1. Uh, let's see here. Brother Aaron, Psalms 141 and verse 3. I probably got scripture for everybody. <laughs> Brother Jamie, Acts chapter 8 and verse 22. Uh, need somebody over here. Brother Dave, 1 John uh, chapter 1, verses 7 through verses 9. Brother Jeff, uh, Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 29. And let me see here, who else can I pick on? Uh, Sister Gail, would you read Colossians chapter 4 and verse 6? All right, now if you didn't get picked tonight, uh, I'll forget by next week, so you might get picked again. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. But we've been uh, discussing uh, over the last while, and I forgot my notebook at the house. I drove the truck from the office, went up there, but rode with Angela. So you're going to have to help me what we've been studying on. How many remembers the first strategy that Satan uses against, well, one of the strategies, not the first, but one of the strategies that Satan uses against us as people of God? Anybody tell me the first one we talked about? Disconnected. Being disconnected. All right, who can tell me the second one? A uh, compromise. Uh, the third one, deception. deception. The fourth one, yeah. doubt. The fifth one, excuses. excuses. The sixth one, we don't have a sixth one. <laughs> All right. Then last Wednesday, uh, we talked about uh, how we are to fight against the tactics and the strategies that Satan has against us. How that God has given us weapons that are not carnal, but they are spiritual in bringing down the strongholds of the enemy. That number one is that wonderful name of Jesus Christ. There's just something about that name, Jesus. Even when it comes off of your lips, there's something about that name. We talked about the blood of Jesus. We talked about the Word of God. The Word of God is used against Satan. We talked about praying in tongues, praying in the Holy Ghost. 
Amen. I believe in it. I believe it's scriptural. And I believe that we need to use that as a strategy against the enemy. The last one is the binding and the loosing. Uh, but tonight we're going to talk about something that if all of us would be honest, we could get more control of this one thing. This one thing that I want to share with you, I believe all of us, uh, can learn how to control better. And that's not our temper. Uh, that's not our appetite, which I desperately need some help on that. <laughs> Amen. We're going to talk about how to control the tongue. The tongue. I'll never forget one lady got up at this one church and she was just discouraged about how she runs off at the mouth. She got up and she testified. She said, Pastor, she said, if I could, I'd lay my tongue on that altar. <laughs> Pastor said, Sister, that altar's not long enough. <laughs> I know of a sweet saint of God that's went on to glory that... Uh, constantly had an issue of running off at the mouth. I loved her deeply. and But she, if she tore you up and spit you out, she'd turn right around and say, I'm sorry. Yeah. And she would get up and she would confess before the church. She said, listen, I have an issue with this. Please pray for me that I'll not do that. And sometimes running off at the mouth is hereditary. <laughs> It's yeah. just something that you grew up with. Uh, sometimes it can be cultural, uh, especially in the mountains. Uh, some, sometimes people think that mountain people don't talk a whole lot. You make them mad and see how much they can talk. Yeah. Yeah. Can I have a witness? Amen. Amen. Uh, but there has been so much, so much damage that has been caused by this one unruly member of the church, and that's our tongue. The tongue has done more damage sometimes than accidents, uh, sometimes worse than uh, death. Sometimes the tongue can cause so much trouble and we can blame the devil and we can say that that is a strategy that Satan uses against us. But the truth of the matter is it is something that you as an individual has to learn to control. Yes. <laughs> and that is not done easily. That is done with much practice. And that's done with a lot of discipline. But at the same time, we cannot rule out this thing, the tongue. We can't rule out talking about it and the damage that it has caused in times past and the damage that it can cause today. The one thing that I want us to get tonight is, uh, uh, you know, these things are awesome. I've, all, I've always said that you know, I believe it was Satan that invented this thing, uh, but it was God that invented caller ID. <laughs> Some of y'all get that later on. Uh, but, but these things are, are very good, but they're also very damaging. Yes, they are. Because a lot of times people can say things. You're right. Without it ever coming out of their mouth, right. yeah. I can do a lot of damage. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, I think everybody knows how I think about Facebook. Uh, I know it just upsets some people, but the people that it probably upsets, you probably have control of it. But a lot of people don't have control of it. Uh, sometimes I, I will literally want to <laughs> blow my top at the uh, craziness that sometimes that people can spout off uh, on Facebook. And, uh, and it's so damaging to the Christian faith. And that's something that uh, I think we need to understand 
Uh, it can be so damaging. So you've got to be very careful with what you even post. Uh, you know, I've, <laughs> I've uh, contacted some people that uh, may have not said it, but reposted something that had profanity in it. I have a problem with that. Amen. I, just, I have a problem with that. If you are a Christian, and if we're on live Facebook tonight, I hope you really get this. And if you're guilty of it, I hope you really get it. If you're reposting things that have profanity, right. you might as well say it. That's right. Amen. You did. Amen. I, I know that uh, might not be uh, acceptable in some people's yeah. eyes, but it's the truth. Right. It's yeah. the truth. You're just as guilty as the party that said it. That's right. So how do we control the tongue? How do we do it? Some people say, I just can't help it. I just can't help it. I, I, I open it up and it just flies out. Well, God gave you something. Yeah. And it's these things that you chew with. Uh, those are not necessarily always used for chewing, but it should be a guard. Right. It keeps our mouth shut. Yes, sir. Yeah. And if you have too much trouble, bite your tongue. Yes, sir. James chapter 3 and verse 6. I think I've got that one going. Yeah. All right, I didn't tell nobody to read that one. James chapter 3 and verse 6. And the Bible says, And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature and it is set on fire of hell. Now, I know a lot of y'all make fun of me because I am a fire bug. I just, when you need a fire built, I'll get you a fire going. I don't care what I have to use. But at the same time, I know how quickly fire can get out of control. Yeah. Never forget it. Some of you may have never heard this story, so I might as well tell it again. I was, uh, we were doing this retaining wall on the lake up in Glenville, Cassers, North Carolina. And my brother, Tim, uh, he's the contractor, and, and I was helping him work. And my job was, was to clear all the debris from off of the lake bank. Well... We didn't go get a builder's permit, I mean a builder's permit, a fire permit because I was going to build it down next to the lake with all the debris and I think, you know, we should be okay. Well, I got the fire going, we started piling all the debris and me and this little guy sat down and started eating some lunch. All of a sudden there's this big gush of wind that came up and caught the pine straw on fire because two weeks prior to that, we had put out over 120 bales of pine straw on this one job. He is a four-star general, General Berber. He's one of the few that is left as a four-star general, and that's the property that we were working on. Well, me and this little guy jumped up, and we started stomping out the fire, and we thought that we had it under control. But all of a sudden, there was another gust of wind that came up. When that gust of wind came up, it shot between my legs and it went up the bank. And I was like, oh my Lord. <laughs> and let me tell you something, when I said, oh my Lord, I meant, oh my Lord. <laughs> and so I ran to the top of the property and it was coming up so quick. And the smoke, if you've ever seen pine straw burn, it burns quick and it produces a lot of smoke. Yes. Well, I called 911, the lady next door, I'm talking about three-quarter million dollar houses. There's one here and one there. And this fire is going up the bank and the lady that owns this one house comes out and says, Save the house! She saved the house! And she gives me her water hose that, honest to you, a water gun would have spit it out a lot quicker than that water hose. So here I was fighting a brush fire with a water hose that had a stream going out at about my cat and I was doing like this. There was no hope. 
And I see that there was no hope, so I called 911. And now remember, I had just run up an embankment. I'm more slap out. I'm breathing heavy. I called 911. And she said, what's your emergency? And I started explaining, calm down, sir. Calm down. I said, ma'am, you don't understand. I said, I see this fire. And all of a sudden, it's reached to the, the porch of the Bert General Berger's house. And it's going, go, woof, woof, and I'm like, oh, dear. <laughs> anyway, the Forest Service comes, Brother Benji. And they said when they came over the dam up there at Glenville, they was like, oh, my, 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 we have got it. We've got some trouble here. And so they got there, and thankfully they were able to put out the fire with very minimal structure danger, uh, structure damage. And, and uh, then he went to write me a ticket. <laughs> and uh, thankfully it was a warning uh, ticket. But I burnt close to ten to twelve thousand dollars worth of shrubbery. Because we had just put out six blue spruce <laughs> and put out all this pine straw, and uh, but fire can get out of control real quick. So you know what I do now when I have a fire? I've got the water hose next to me, and I make sure it's not too dry <laughs> because it'll get out of control real quickly. The same way it is with our tongue. It can get out of control real quickly. Let's pray tonight. Lord, I love you. I thank you, God, for a time to share tonight. Lord, I, I pray that this word will find its lodging place in our hearts and in our minds and in our lives. Lord, there's not one of us here tonight that says we've got this down pat. We've got it under control. Because, God, there are moments in our life, Lord, we lose it and we need your help. And God, help us to remember that our lives are an example of who you were when you walked upon this earth. And God, forgive us when we have failed you. I pray in Jesus' name that you would help us to receive from this lesson tonight. Apply it to our lives. We give you glory. We give you honor. In Jesus' lovely name. Praise the Lord. Uh, I'll be very honest with you. I believe it's a good thing. And I believe it's a, the right thing to recognize the need to control the tongue. I believe it's good. I believe that we need to talk about it. I don't believe it's something uh, that we just need to shove underneath the carpet and say just forget about it because you can destroy your witness and your testimony just like that. Yeah. By things that come out of your mouth. And that's the reason we have to be so careful to guard our mouths. In the scripture found in Matthew chapter 12 and verse 36, Brother Joseph, if you don't care to read that. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. I don't know about anyone else, but I will speak for Marty Presley. That scares me. Yes, sir. That every idle word that comes out of our mouth, we're going to be held accountable at the day of judgment. In other words, we're going to give an account to God for everything that's come out of our mind. Do you agree with that? Amen. You might not want to agree with it, but it is true. And so we need to be very careful with how we talk. I love, if you listen here, if you wasn't here Sunday night, I pray and I hope that you have went back and either watched it uh, we're going to get the outline out to you. But one of the things that Brother Cole shared with us on Sunday night was good godly conversation that will build up our faith, that will increase our faith. You know, there's nothing wrong with us sitting around and, and, and shooting the gab about fishing and hunting or uh, shopping or a lot of other things. But we as Christians, we need to be careful that the time that we do spend, that we don't just spend all of the time spending uh, talking about everything else but what sometimes we need to talk about. Because I really believe that we need to talk about spiritual things, scriptural things, things for edification. And I believe God would help us. So remember, every idle word that comes out of our mouth, we're going to be held accountable to God at the day of judgment. In James chapter 1, and verse 26, 
James chapter 1 and verse 26. Bobby Joe, I believe you have that one. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Read it one more time. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Ah. Uh. In other words, you can destroy your witness with what comes out of your mouth. Absolutely. You can say, I am a Christian. I belong to the Lord. But if you're not able to bridle, in other words, control what comes out of your mouth, you're deceiving yourself and your religion is in vain. Dear God, not ever let it be said of Marty Presley that my religion is in vain because I'm not able to bridle my tongue. In Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 19, uh, Brother Benji, I believe you're the one that has that. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 19. Really listen to this scripture. In the multitude of words, there one is not sin, but he that refraineth his lips is wise. In other words, if you speak too much, <laughs> sometimes when you say too much, you can get yourself in trouble. Right. Yeah. That's the reason why it's been told me all of my life. I don't know about anybody else. But you need to listen twice as much as you speak. Because God gave you two ears to hear and one time to speak. So we need to remember, you know, uh, I know I'm a Presley, and if any of my brothers or my mom and dad watch this, forgive me, but Presleys can gab. <laughs> Get around Presleys. My grandpa was a gabber. He could talk once he opened his mouth. He didn't know when to hush. I remember in church when he would stand to testify. My grandpa was blind ever since I was about four or five years old. My grandpa didn't know when to sit down, so grandma would get a hold of his coattail and jerk on it. It's like, it's just about time to sit down. But sometimes you can say a whole lot more by saying a whole lot less. Because the more you talk, the more trouble you can get yourself into. Yes, You're right. And this is this is the excuse that we use. What well, I've just got to get it off of my chest. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all real quiet tonight. And I like what the one preacher said, when it's tight, it's right. Because a lot of people, have you ever heard that? Well, boy, I feel better. I got that off of my chest. But man, what they spouted off was hurtful was detrimental. It just brought people down. It didn't edify. It didn't lift up. So it wasn't, it didn't benefit you anything. Why don't, if you want to spout off, and if you're wanting to go and just vent it and get it over with, let me tell you the greatest thing you can do. There is a lot of mountains around here that's full of a lot of woods. There's places that you can go and you can scream to the top of your lungs and just spout it all off and there'll not be one person that will hear you. Amen. And you're not going to hurt anybody. And you can finally say, well, I just got it off my chest. But two, you still got to be careful with what you say then because let me tell you something, there's a record that's going on up in heaven that God knows every word. <laughs> oh, God, help us to not be love the Lord. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So the more you talk, the more trouble you can get yourself into. Would you agree with that? <laughs> Four people. Please come. <laughs> so what are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to do? How can we can control the tongue? It's very easy. You've got to purify the mind. You've got to change the source of the foul tongue. You've got to change things. Because in Matthew chapter 15, verses 17 through verses 20, I believe Brother Sean has this. And I'm going to read 16 through there. Okay. So Jesus said, 
are you also still without understanding? Do you not yet understand that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and is eliminated? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart, and they defile a man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. Right. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile a man. Right. What comes out of your mouth right. is first to you. Right. That's right. A, a, a filthy heart, a filthy mouth. You've heard it said, and we tell our kids this growing up, junk in, yeah. junk out. That's one of the reasons why I grew up in an era and it wouldn't hurt if we were to get back and preach a lot stronger than what we preach today. Somebody help me here just for a minute. I mean, because I was taught and preached as a Christian, you don't listen to country music. Yeah. You, you, you don't listen to rock and roll. Because you listen to things that are godly and are holy and are for edification. Now, I, I know some of you would say, I, now I can argue there with that because. You know, there's some good old songs out there that is good, and I do agree with you on that. Wow. However, there is a lot of junk right. that comes out of that same mouth that might sing a good song. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. <laughs> because what happens, folks, this is what happens. You, you can get that because Satan is very smart with what he does. If Satan can somehow get in a song, then get into your mind, then it's going to come out of your mouth. Yeah. So you say, well, preacher, does that mean that I can't listen to good old country music? Does that mean that I cannot listen to rock and roll music? Let me tell you. Let me. Have, well, here in just a moment, I'll answer that, but not right now. <laughs> Amen. So if whatever comes out, it first comes from the heart. Right. And if the heart's dirty, the mouth's going to be dirty as well. Right. And I'm not just talking about profanity. That's right. Right. I'm talking about gossip. Yeah. Well, if I'm telling the truth, it ain't gossip. Oh, yeah, it is. I get so tired of hearing that. Oh, my goodness. All right, Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 9. After four people, I've done for God who has this one. Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 9. Brother Scott. It says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Uh -oh. Yeah. oh, Lord Jesus. Now listen, this scripture is not to be used as an excuse That's right. to let bad things come from the heart. That's not given an excuse to say, well, the Bible says the heart's deceitful. So, you know, that's just the way it is. Who can know it? But there's something that we're going to talk about in just in a minute that there had to be a transformation take place in your heart and your life through the shed blood of Jesus Christ that gave you a new heart. Yes. That gave you a new mouth. That gave you a new desire. A fresh, a fresh desire. In Genesis chapter 8, and verse 21. Genesis chapter 8 and verse 21. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake, for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite anymore everything living as I have done. The heart is evil from their youth. Uh -huh. From a very young age. But in Romans chapter 12 and verse 2 
we're going to begin to talk about how that we can change our minds which will change what we speak because in Romans chapter 12 and verse 2 says Amen. So our mind, it must be renewed. And I honestly believe that we, we spoke of some of those things on, uh, Brother Cobus spoke on some of those things on Sunday night about our faith increasing, about listening to good music, uh, about reading a good book, uh, 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 of having a godly conversation, uh, of listening or reading the Word of God. These things is what transforms and it's what changes our mind. In Psalms 119 in verse 11, I believe it is, uh, Sister, Sister Marcia, Psalms 119 and verse 11. Amen. So how can we refrain from doing evil or committing sin? His Word. Have I hid my heart that I might not sin against God? Then, Brother Adam, Psalm chapter 1. Let's go ahead and just read that whole chapter then. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doeth he meditate day and night. Yes. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers yes. of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season, his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Amen. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Read that verse 2 one more time. But his, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doeth he meditate day and night. Amen. From morning unto day, Meditate, digest, read the word of the Lord. Then he describes of what man you will be if you do that. So God help us to do that as well. In Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8. Did I not give that one out? Did I skip that one? I do apologize. Somebody look up Philippians 4 and 8 right fast. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, which is power, and if there be any praise, think on these things. So to answer the question about ungodly music, they go on things that are pure? Yeah. Holy? Just? If there be any virtue, if there be any breaks, think on these things. So, do you think that the worldly things can affect our hearts and our minds. Amen. 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 The Bible is telling us what we can do in order to control what comes out of here. The more that we feed this with spiritual things, the more spiritual things will come out of our mouth. Amen. In Psalm chapter 51 and verse 10. Psalm 51 and verse 10. Did I miss that one too? Seriously? Well, somebody look it up. <laughs> Psalm 51 and verse 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a bright spirit within me. Amen. So I believe what we need to do in order to control what comes out of our mouth, we need to pray to God, the one that created the mind, and we need to repent and we need to confess to God, God, I've got an issue. I've got an issue. Lord, will you create in me a clean heart? God, would you create in me such cleanness that when I speak, clean things come out? 
Would there be anybody here tonight says, you know what, preacher, that don't sound too bad. That, that don't sound too bad as a Christian. What if? Think about it. Think about this. The witness and the testimony that we give to the world. Yeah. Every person that says, I am a Christian, if, if things were to be clean that come out of their mouth and would be to edification, and that would be to uh, praise and honor to God. Don't you believe that our witness would be more effective than what it is today? That's the reason the world says, if that is what a Christian is, I don't want to be it. It's because a lot of times what we say comes out of our mouth is contradictory to what we say that's happened in our hearts. And God forgive us, and I believe that we need to pray and ask God, Lord, help me, O Lord. Help me, oh God, to, to focus on things that are just and holy and pure. In Psalms 141 and verse 3, did I tell somebody that one? All right, Brother Aaron. Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep the door of my lips. Oh. Do you pray that? How often do we get down on our knees and begin to pray and say, Lord, would you please watch my mouth? Well, that's the reason I'm talking to you tonight. So when you leave out of here tonight, you can't say I'm excused from saying what I'm saying because God is saying, listen here, I want to control your mouth. And some people say, well, no one can control it. It's an unruly member. In James, it even tells us how that you bridle a horse uh, to turn it here and there and, and uh, how that the, the, the oar will control the, the ship and how that it goes. But a man can't do this, but God can. Yes, He can. God can do it through the power of the Holy Spirit. I honestly believe that we can become more effective in what we say and let us, God, speak the things which are for edification. Amen. In Acts chapter 8, and verse 22. Repent therefore of this thy wickedness and pray God if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven. Oh God. Listen church, I'm not up here tonight saying that I've got this down pat. But when we, we, when we are aware of it, just, just like the, the sister, and some of you know who I'm talking about, the one that would say things that get up, I mean tears would spring down her face. Uh, but you know, you've got to be honest about this and you've got to be honest before God and, and repent of it. And repenting, it's not going back and doing it again. Right. Repenting is turning the other direction and not doing it again. And we're going to talk about that in just uh, in a few minutes here. Amen. Of what, what we can do. You say, well, preacher, you say repent and not do it over again. But, but why do we slip up and why do we do that? Uh, we'll share just a, a few thoughts here in just in a minute. But in 1 John uh, chapter 1, verses 7 through verses 9. But we walk in the light, and he is in the light. We have fellowship one with another. I think I think the greatest thing that we have to do is quit excusing ourselves from what we say. If you don't see that it's sin, you're right. If you don't see that it's wrong, it's hard to help you. But when you're made aware that, hey, you know what? I've been sinning with my mouth. You know, some people say, well, I don't have problems with uh, uh, drinking. I don't have no problems with adultery. I don't have no problems with this. But you realize that the Bible says that you can kill somebody with your mouth? That's right. That's right. That you're just as guilty as murder if you were to take a knife and thrust it through somebody's heart if you're talking about them and degrading them? Oh God, forgive us tonight. Amen. Uh, in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 29, I believe that we can replace the sinful acts with righteousness. Because in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 29, who has that? Brother Jeff. Let not corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth but that which is good in the use of edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearers. You know, I, I've, I've met some people that, that practices this. Have you ever been around somebody that's always 
uh, so complimentary in what they say? Have you ever met somebody like that? I know some, some pastors and sometimes I'm like, they're, they're just blowing a lot, of, a lot of hot air because they're so complimentary and, and always lifting up and always encouraging. And I, I'm, I'm a type of person I have a hard time receiving that. And, uh, and that's, that's, that's bad on my part. I don't receive compliments real well, never have. Uh, and uh, I don't know, that's something I need to work on. But you know what, what if, what, what if every single one of us were, be comp were to be complimentary when, when we talk to one another, where we would be edifying, where we'd encourage one another, uh, where we'd pat somebody on the back, you know, uh, kind of like the football team does, <laughs> even if you made a bad block, they'd come and slap you and say, good job, try it, do it again. You know, we, we would learn, we could help each other so much if we can use our words for edification and for lifting up and for encouraging one another. And some people say, well, I just can't do that because I, I've got to be truthful with what I say. Listen, if you can't lift up your brother and if you can't lift up your sister, You're right. you might need to go back and kneel down and cry out to God for forgiveness because your heart's, the heart's evil. Amen? Amen. Amen. Colossians chapter 4 and verse 6. Colossians chapter 4 and verse 6. Who did I pick on? Sister Gail. Let your speech always be gracious. Season with salt so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. Amen. Season with salt. In other words, be tasteful. Be tasteful in what you say. And you know, as I was studying today and praying and and I was like, you know, Lord, I would love to say that I have this down pat. I would love to say that uh, when I'm around people that I'm always edifying people, I'm always lifting them up. But you know what? I've been guilty of tearing people down. Yeah. I've been guilty of it. I've been guilty of saying negative things and not positive things. You say, well, preacher, why are you preaching us that? If you don't have it under control, I'm saying we need help. Yes, we, do. we need help. A lot of things that we're blaming the devil for is nothing more than the choices that we make as Christians. We're blaming the devil for the destruction that's in the world today. And a lot of times it's because the Christians have allowed bad things to come out of their mouth because of the choices that they made. That's right. That's right. It's nothing the devil done. It's what we did ourselves. Good preaching anyway. Praise the Lord. You say, well, preacher, how, how, do, how, how do I fix things? How do I fix this? I'll never forget one time in football. It was my junior year, and uh, Scott Craig and I and Craig Barker, we were, we were uh, picked. We were the, the strong part of the defense. Uh, and I'll never forget one practice. We weren't getting the job done. And they were running this one particular play. Scott was missing. I was missing. Craig was missing. We were just not getting it. And I'll never forget it. Coach Deets, if anybody knows Coach Deets, you know how he was. Run again. They run and play again. Still missed it. Run it again. Honest, and I'm not lying. Those that ever played for Coach Deep, you know I'm not lying. He done the same stinking play. I guarantee, if I'm not, I, I don't want to exaggerate too much, but I guarantee anywhere from 10 to 15 times he run that same stinking play. Just over and over and over and over again until we got it. I'll never forget one time. <laughs> we were scrimmaging against Hendersonville. And I was misreading a play. And uh, of course scrimmage, you know, the coaches are allowed to be out there and everything else. And I'll never forget what Coach White done to me. He about killed me. 
And he was trying to show me how to read that guard that was sitting right in front of me. And I wasn't getting it. And he got so irate mad at me. The next play, I don't know if he talked to the other coaches and tell them what, what he was going to do with me. But he about killed me. Because he got me by the seat of my britches. And he was in there at the next play and he literally shoved me into that ball player. He said, that's how you read. <laughs> After I get up, I'm stoved up like this. I, yeah, I made a good play. So what do you do in order to fix this? It's when you mess up, you confess. That was wrong. I shouldn't do it. And you do it again. You try again. And you do that repetitive over and over and over again. You say, well, that's not being serious. That's not being honest. That's not being true. No, sir, that's being human. That's right. That's being human, recognizing I've got an issue and I've got to fix this thing. So every time that I mess up, do like we did, you know, if you cussed on the football field, you had to drop and give 10. I mean, do something to fix what's wrong. Wouldn't that be funny to be in the middle of Walmart and see some of half of our church dropping down and giving 10 plus cents? Say they just cussed or they said something wrong about somebody. <laughs> but serious. You, 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 you back up and I, you've heard me say this. If you've been around me any length of time, uh, when things don't go my way or things go bad or if not as planned, I said sometimes, you probably heard me say, sometimes you've got to back up and punt again. And sometimes that's the way it is with a Christian. Sometimes you just got to back up and you've got to punt again. You've got to try again. Instead of ignoring it and saying, well, that's just how my mama was. Or that's how my daddy was. Or that's how I was raised. No, you recognize it. You confess it and say, you know what? I've got an issue. And once you do that, let me tell you another thing that will help you. Is find an accountability, accountability partner. That you'll be accountable to somebody that every time that you're saying something bad or negative, you go to them and say, hey, pray for me, I've messed up. And another thing that you've got to do, and we may not like this, not only are you to repent and fix it, you're to go to the person that you talked about and fix that too. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, that's good teaching. I promise you this one thing. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you what will help you better than anything. You say, well, preacher, you're acting like all of us got a bunch of problems with talking. I'm not saying that. But if you do, let me tell you how to fix it real quick. Is if you do it wrong, you go to the person and you can confess it before them. I promise you, if you will make that, what you do every time you don't do right, you'll quit it. Yes, right. <laughs> you quit it because it's embarrassing to go up to somebody and say, you know what? I talked about you and I'm sorry. Now listen here. Don't y'all go dig up bones when you leave out of here and go hurt 20, 20 people in your family. Start from now and start doing better. Don't you sing, don't you do that Travis song? Digging up. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta leave them buried. <laughs> I knew. That's the reason I said it. I'm just glad y'all been listening. I'm glad y'all been paying attention. <laughs> Amen. So so you're to <laughs> if you do wrong, fix it. Just fix it. Confess it. And say, God, I need your help. And I need your strength. All right, let's come, let's draw this thing to a conclusion. So, what we need to pray when you say, Lord, please purify our minds. God, please help my mind to be pure. And that, that's the reason you have to take control over what you watch, what you listen, what you read. I mean, there's a numerous, a numerous of things that. We can talk about tonight, but, but junk in, junk out. So you've got to purify the mind by putting good things in. And then you need to pray to God is the one that gave you the mind. And He's the one that can help you 
and, and, and pray, oh God, you know, please let me create a, a, a proper habit. And, and you know, I'm going to try this, folks. I'm going to try to be more complimentary to people, more edifying, more, edify, more encouraging. You think that'll help somebody? <laughs> did I say did I say that there's an exclu there are exclusions to this that I've been preaching tonight? I, 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 I didn't mention that. Let me put in the the, the see I've done A B C D uh, uh C. Chris, Chris, my Chris. <laughs> Brother Mike, you're looking as good as you can. Yeah. <laughs> too funny, but Mike, as, as, as crazy as you are, Amen. and I've been truthful, but dude, let me tell you something. When you weren't here, while you were sick, you were missed. Amen. I mean, you were missed. And Miss Linda, you mess up everything when you don't show up. Amen. Amen. I'm serious. And every single one of us were so important to the kingdom of God. I don't care who you are or what position you play. Come on. Every single one of us are important. We need to lift up and we need to encourage and we need to strengthen one another. And I promise you, it'll help you. It'll be more positive. It'll help you even sleep better. Well, you don't have to go through everything that's went on that day. Right. Lift up one another. Stand right. to your feet. Right. Amen. Praise God, I enjoyed myself. Brother Jamie. Brother Marty, you're talking about that football. Everybody has to coach Dixon. I've got to tell you this because it was one of the best lessons that I learned as a youngster. We, Murphy had went 23 games undefeated. You know the team I'm talking about. Oh, yes. Most of them went to play pro ball and yes. college ball. Yes. And I'll never forget, we were behind. We ended up winning that game to do win statement. In that, in that game, we were behind at the time. Coach Steve took a timeout, a very important timeout, just to come and talk to us. Nobody was in trouble. He come out, we're sitting there thinking, oh no, we're gonna get it. But he comes out there and he says, I want you just to listen. Just listen. And we just stopped there listening. And you can hear them arguing on the other team with each other. They were mad some they because we were even at close and closer than they thought it was ever going to be. But it taught me a lesson, and now that I look at it in a spiritual sense. You know, when things get tough, it's not the time to turn on each other. Amen. That's right. You know, God's children really need, and I, I got to thinking about that. And I, he said, we've got this. Yes. We've got this. He said, I know we're behind, but we've got this. And it was an encouraging thing to say, we do have this. He can make you think you're, you're going to run and you're going to do this. And, and you know, I know that's just football, but that is a great metaphor for it. Yeah. Amen. You know, to lift one another up, and we really encourage one another when we we was really behind at that point. But come on ahead, and but but it was I really felt like that speech is what done it. Amen. And sometimes a good speech, and like Sister Linda was saying, you called and encouraged people to church tonight. I mean, it's, everything's important. Amen. And you wouldn't believe how I fought that. I fought that. I was like. They're just going to think I'm just trying to get them to church. And it wasn't that at all. Because I think this is important. I think it's important for your Christian walk to help you, to strengthen you, to give you what you need to... Because to, a lot of people say this is a hunt day. This is the middle of the week. Try to get through the rest of the week. And I just believe it's important. And uh, I believe it is. Thank you, Brother Jamie, for sharing that. Uh, that's, I've never heard that story, so I'm glad you told that. Because you know he's my elder, so I wasn't I wasn't there. Uh, oh, I was supposed to be edified. I'm sorry. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. I do love you tonight. I love you with every, and when I say that, I mean it. I love you with every ounce of energy that I have. I love you with all of my heart. And I just pray God's blessings to be upon you. And let us be more encouraged and edifying one another. And I believe it's going to strengthen us. 
And I believe it's going to help us. Amen. Praise God. I love you in Jesus' name. Be here on Sunday ready to worship and glorify God. Believe somebody's going to be saved. Praise the Lord. How many would like to see somebody saved on Sunday? That do this preacher some good. Amen. Amen. I know it do you some good as well. Father, we love you tonight. Thank you, God, for this time of sharing. I pray in Jesus' name that the words will not fall upon deaf ears but receptive hearts. And God, help us to walk out of this place challenged. But Lord, knowing that we can meet the challenge because greater is He that is in us than he that is in the world. Lord, we glorify you. We magnify you. In Jesus' lovely name, amen and amen. God bless you. It's my prayer. You can be dismissed. Amen. 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 Amen.